So for a lot of people, recruiting and National Signing Day is even more important than playing the football games. <laughs> there's, there's folks all over the place that are more into the recruiting rankings than the actual team rankings and uh, follow this stuff night and day. So, of course, we got to jump on this. It's National Signing Day on Wednesday. Uh, first and foremost, any particular news, any players out there that are on the, the, the fence that may make a good class or a tremendous class even better? Um, really, the only player still left out there for Clemson is the defensive man from California, Corey Foreman. He was on campus a couple of weeks ago, you know, for the pit game. Was committed earlier in the year, backed off of that commitment saying he needed to take some more visits. Unfortunately for him, right after that, the NCAA mandated dead period was put in place and it's been in effect ever since. So he's really not gotten to take any of those visits, not official visits anyways. He's taken some unofficial visits to a lot of places. But I, right now, I don't think – I think he's going to end up somewhere else. I don't think he's going to end up at Clemson, not from some of the things I've heard. Um, I, I've heard – I was hearing some conflicting stuff, but over the last few days – it's starting to sound more and more like he's going to stay home and end up at Southern Cal. And if it's not at Southern Cal, it's going to, it, it won't be at Clemson. I don't think, I, I think he really likes the school, but I think in the end, being so far away from home, moving across country, just a little bit too much for him. Clemson ranked in the top five in the nation, depending on your service, number one in the ACC and uh, a, fairly small class of about 17 to 19 commits. Of course, this is just the first of two national signing days, but what's proven out to be true, this being the third year of the first signing day in December, is that about 80 to 85% of the top three to 500 players in the nation sign in December. So just taking us down the board in regards to the guys that stand out to you as the best players, the most intriguing players, maybe some guys under the radar that don't necessarily have the stars next to the name, but that you like, uh, just, uh, let us know what, uh, what do you like out of this class? Yeah. Um, I think before, you know, all the coronavirus stuff that this class might've been a little bit bigger, but with, all, with the dead period in place and not being able to host kids or have any contact with them, that that's kind of had a big impact on the way Clemson recruits. Luckily for them, they had most of this class locked up early, which is the way they do things here in recent years. You know, they, they, they locked these classes down early, and most of them were already committed before all, all this – the dead period was put in place. But, um, you know, going down and looking at the class, this is a good class. It's a really good class. I mean, obviously it's top five, but I think the highest rated guy is the running back Will Shipley out of North Carolina. He's a five-star guy. Uh, he, he's just a burner. He, he, there's You can use him in a lot of different ways in the passing game, out of the backfield, line him up in the slot, maybe even return punts. Kid can do it all. You know, he, he's compared to Christian McCaffrey a lot. Um, a, another guy in the class is Barrett Carter, a linebacker. He, another five-star guy, He he's really good out of Georgia. He's, he's going to fit real well in the Brent Venable system. Uh, and I tell you, a guy that doesn't get a lot of play that I really like in this class is a, the, the other running back Clemson was able to sign, Phil Moffa out of Georgia. I think he's a four-star guy, and, and Shipley gets all the publicity being the five-star guy, but th this Moffa kid can play, man. He, he can run the ball. He, he is tough to bring down. I, I, I don't have his stats right here in front of me from this season, but he, he had a really good senior season. I want to think he averaged like nine yards a carry or something like it was something outrageous. But, yeah, he, he, he had a fantastic senior season, really, really helped his stock. If he wasn't already committed, he probably would have shot up the recruiting rankings. But I, I'm really high on the Moffa kid. They, they've also got a couple of good receivers. One of them is um, Bo Collins. Um, he's a former teammate of DJ Uinga Lalale. I still have problems saying that. Sorry. You're going to have <laughs> but, to get um, used to that, Jason. I know, man. And now for a little while. It, you know, after, as soon as I got used to spelling it, now I'm having trouble saying it all of a sudden. But he, he's a former TJ um, teammate of um, DJs. And I can't remember if he's a four or five star guy, but he's either four or five star. But he, he's like a top 100 guy. He, he's going to be really good. Another receiver they signed is Dakari Collins. He's going to be really good. Another four star guy. Yeah, this is a really solid class. 
couple some some really good skill guys, some a couple of um pass rushers that they, they, they might need a year or two to develop, but have real high ceilings. But yeah, th- this is going to be a real solid class, despite it being a little bit on the smaller side. I always notice, uh, as you pointed out with the two running backs, that uh, a fan base obviously gravitates to the guy that's higher ranked. But, you know, when when, when one positional player is ranked in, let's say, number three, and it is his position, maybe he's the third rated wide receiver and the other guy's like 12th, <laughs> believe me, uh, yeah. maybe the number three guy outclasses the number 12 guy the majority of the time, but it's not like 99 times out of a hundred. The other guy's still looked at as the 12th best wide receiver in the country. And, you know, within a year, he might be the guy and the other guy falls back. It's, it's not uncommon that those rankings, you can't hold to them that closely. Uh, that, you know. that, that, that's exactly right. And that's, that's kind of what you're talking about between um Will Shipley and Phil Moffa. I think Moffa is the ninth best, running back in the country according to 24 seven. So we're talking about that, that big of a difference. Absolutely. But the, as you mentioned, the publicity and the attention and the hype is like that different. They're they're two different types of backs. You know, Moffa's more of the big physical bruising style guy and and Shipley's more of the burner. But as far as just talent, you know, yeah, we're talking not that big of a difference. And people gravitate to the guy that can uh, go 80 yards, too. Oh, yeah. They, they gravitate right towards him, five stars. <laughs>